Hi, I'm Dave Smith for Police One, and this is Roll Call Reality Training. You know, if Stephen King ever wrote a horror novel uh, about a police call, it would be this one that the Evansville, Indiana Police Department had to deal with. 51-year-old Barry Freeman, for some reason, with no criminal background that we can find at all, and a military background, suddenly decides to kill and ambush police officers. This is our nightmare. We talk about ambushes all the time. But how do we train for active shooters? We often go to closed environments. Usually we go to a school or a church or a hospital and we do our training, a very closed controlled environment. But let's take an open neighborhood. It's his neighborhood. He knows everything about it. And he's there with a shotgun and an AR-15. Now watch as our officers approach into the driveway. Okay, let's look at the disadvantages our officers have. First off, there is fireworks going on as this shooting engagement is going on. He has the ability to control where he is and they don't because they can't even see him. It's an extremely dim lit area where he is and they're very often in illuminated areas. And you know at night, the contrast is so powerful. If you're in an illuminated area trying to look at a dim light area, you can't see and this is the advantage. They see flashes of, of muzzle but they can't shoot because we don't do suppression fire. In spite of how TV shows have us do it all the time, we don't do it. We have to have an articulated target. And we gotta be certain of that target. He doesn't need that. All he needs is somebody moving. In fact, he kills a neighbor who comes out to make sure the other neighbors are okay, mistaking that neighbor as a police officer. Well, also we know that he's only intent on shooting police officers and their vehicles. Watch as he engages officers coming again from a highly illuminated area into the dim lit area. Now think about this. They're not sure how many shooters there are. Those that are arriving can't really tell specifically where all the threats are coming from. And all of a sudden there's no safe route to the scene. We often talk about how important it is to give a safe route to the scene. How do you know what the safe route is when you're disoriented? And remember, this is his neighborhood and he's about to go mobile. All right, this nightmare goes on for 40 minutes. Think about that. You've got, again, you've got all these distractors. You have the inability to see. You've got the chaos. This is obviously just the chaos of, of battle. And once again, we train and we train in closed environments for an active shooter. Now we're in an open environment. And this is why we have to think about our cover, our concealment, our communication. And that's what's critically important. You'll see that throughout this, the officers are continuously communicating effectively. More and more resources are being brought to the scene. Now this is the kind of thing that we can see. We have a guy very familiar with his weapons and at the same time very familiar with that neighborhood. Uh, advantage to the bad guy. He doesn't need a specific target. He just needs any target, although he's passing up civilian vehicles and shooting at law enforcement vehicles. Watch as he engages these, these officers. Okay, now if that hasn't given you a bit of a pucker factor, I want you, while you're watching this, think about how would you handle this? How would you communicate? And what resources does your agency have? What resources do you have? Do you have a carbine? Do you have night vision equipment? Do you have all these things available? Most of us don't have on patrol. And that's the kind of thing you've got SWAT officers responding. And, and fortunately, Detective Kyle Theory SWAT was getting ready to go on a special assignment. So that he gets in the neighborhood. Now he ends this after 40 minutes when he sees the suspect, illuminates the suspect with the, the, the light from his weapon. And watch this as he hits the suspect with two rounds. Again, we've seen that the suspect has gone mobile. He's out moving around and when he's dropped. But here's something else to think about. You know, the civilian community, they just expect us to rush up and start first aid on a bad guy. You don't do that because watch as the suspect after he's gone down will open fire. So even fatally wounded, Barry Freeman wants to kill law enforcement officers. Now he did not survive his wounds, he died at the hospital, and we don't know what his motive was. Again, this has got that Stephen King feel to it, like evil just suddenly arose inside of him. We don't know what he was thinking. Tragically, a, an innocent civilian who'd gone out to check on his neighbors was killed by the suspect. But miraculously, no officers were injured at all. That, that tells you that the extent of training was highly effective and this is the thing, we train and train, like I said, you trained in closed environments. Expand your mind while you're on your patrol today, while you're out there driving around, ask yourself, 
how would I contain an active shooter in this neighborhood, in this neighborhood? See, the problem in this case, of course, uh, the suspect, Freeman, this is his neighborhood. He knows where to go. He knows everything. And frankly, in that dim light setting, you know, this is the one of the problems we have. We, we often don't think about contrast. But when you're in a bright light area looking into a dark light area, you can't see. This is why we use our illumination. This is why to our advantage every chance, especially now if a potential ambush, illuminate, illuminate whenever possible. You go in to search a building, do you, the argument, do I turn on the lights or do I use my flashlight? This is a debate that's been going on for as long as I've been in law enforcement, a long time. You know, I'm kind of sided with the camp that says, well, if we got a switch, let's turn on the dang light. Uh, and then again, uh, when I was in SWAT, we often used our illumination to blind people. So these are the kind of things that I want you to debate. I want you to talk about now with your teammates sitting around. What are your neighborhoods? How would you contain a neighborhood? What assets does your agency have? How long would it take an asset to get there? This whole scene is 40 minutes long. It's a long time, it's a lot of pucker factor. And of course, Evansville, right away, one of the first things they did was make sure everybody had peer support to talk to each other. That's how we heal. Supportive camaraderie is one of the critical issues in law enforcement. You're there for each other. Talk about it. If you've got anxiety, if you don't have anxiety, you're pretty numb or highly medicated. I'm telling you what, that's a heck of a heck of a long time to suffer the stress of that. So talk it over with your friends. Talk about it. Talk about how you feel. You're damn right you're afraid. You know, this is the kind of thing that nobody wants to be in that environment, especially in the darkness that all these human fears are, are rise up in that particular setting. You got the loud bangs, you got the ambiguous fireworks going off, you have all these things. How many things could go wrong? That's what I mean. This is a Stephen King novel of a call. Okay, there, I got you all puckered up. Now, talk amongst each other. How would you have handled it? Everywhere you go in your patrol beat, ask, what if I, how would I handle an active shooter here? What would I deal with here? What would I deal with there? If I was ambushed here, would I have, be able to fight through it? These are all critical issues. And this is the thing that's so important. And even if you're wounded, remember, in an ambush, the key is to fight and fight and fight back. Do not stop. Have that warrior spirit. Okay, now you go out there, you take care of yourself, take care of your partner, and we'll see you next time on Roll Call Reality Training.